Hello, everybody. This is Sandra Graves, and thank you for visiting in Vivo Life again. You know that I don't talk like that. Hello, everybody. This is Sandra Graves, and welcome to in Vivo Life once again. You know that I'm not going live anymore, at least not for now, because my live shows, talk, conferences, classes are done privately now. So if you want to learn more about that, all you have to do is visit me at www.envivoassociate.com just to fill out the form. But if you want more information, send an email to info at envivoassociate.com if you want to learn more. If you are a coach, a speaker, an expert, an author, you have some knowledge of something, then all you have to do is get in touch with me so that we can connect and maybe we can give some online classes together. I am in San Antonio, Texas, just like my guest. My guest is from San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> She's crazy like me too. Yeah. And I'm so excited. Her name is Norma Reyes. I mean, she does have that doctor in front of it, you know, you know, and I got to prepare you because if you want to get in touch with her at the end of this conversation, all you have to do is go to Instagram and look up DR Reyes Life Coaching. <laughs> Reyes Life Coaching, not just the doctor, but DR for doctor. Okay. I am educating you the way I was educated. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We are going to be talking today about, I know, I know my English is not that good, but listen to this word, happenstance and career development. I know the career development, you heard about it before, but the happenstance, you have not. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And I am going to be quiet so that my... Norma Reyes can tell us a little bit more about her before we get into the Tell us <laughs> who is Norma Reyes? Oh, lots of things, lots of things. So I'm a career and life coach, a mother of three, a wife, and a child of two immigrants that believed education was very important, but they didn't direct me in any particular way. They let me explore my life and decide. And I think that's why I like career development because I get to explore with everybody. That's my favorite thing. And see what they like and see them, their, their careers develop. Isn't that cool? So that's a little bit of it. Yes. Yeah, yes. The it's more that you help people and the more you get into their brain and you pull, the more you get to know yourself. Isn't that wonderful? That's yes. Wonderful. Yes. Yes, yes, get to learn more. Yeah. So, so much learning. You got to know about Norma, have a normal life. <laughs> because you know what? That's what we call normal. Everybody have a little crazy in them, but that's the normal. <laughs> <laughs> that is the normal. There's no normal people, really. There's nobody. The normal is having a little crazy. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is the happenstance. Norma, what is happenstance? So happenstance is just everything, everything that can happen in your life. And so that's uh, the major life events, of course, you know, getting married, having a baby, um, a loved one passing away, getting fired, quitting a job. I mean, anything that can happen to anyone, it's happenstance. And so, so what my... Break it down happens and stands like how did that came together what does it really mean so what does it mean it's just things that occur to you that you don't have any control over okay that 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 i understand a little bit more i think but it, um the is that a new word or uh, towards merge together or what, what no no, it's not a new word. I did de definitely did not come up with it. It's been around for a long time, and it goes back to the research that, um, well, it doesn't go back to the research that I did, but it's, it's a very old word just to explain life events or things that happen to us, and we're just there, you know. 
Yeah, I I didn't hear that word um, before. The first time I heard it, I'm like, happy? A stance of happy or, or a standing? Or I was not sure what to make of it. But thank you for explaining it. So how do we come up with this happy stance and career development? How, what is the benefit of this? How you put those two together? Can you explain that to us? Yes, so in my research that I was doing, it, it really drew to me, it was, it's called planned happenstance. And what it is is planning, right, to ha be able to handle happenstance, those things that happen to you that you feel like you have no control. And so there's five skills that everyone can utilize, practice, in their life, in their career, in everything. And so how to be successful by using these five skills. Okay. So we're gonna be hearing some of those five skills? Yes. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. Uh, 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 uh. I'm ready for the happenstance, the five skills. Come on, bring on the first one, girlfriend. Oh. The first one is curiosity. Always being curious mm -hmm. to exploring learning opportunities. So I'll give you an example of how people can use curiosity in their everyday life to create opportunities. And so this is, you know, reading books, going out doors, talking to people. Um, oh, perfect example. So a couple months ago, I went to this training that I had downtown at a hotel. And there was another training going on across the hall. And I stopped because I was curious to see what it was about because I always like to learn because I, I, I like to say I'm nosy. <laughs> and so the lady tells me, oh, it's a library coach. She teaches librarians about the new books coming out. I was like, what? There's a library coach? A library coach. There's a coach for everything, right? Yeah. So she's a she goes around the nation and she gets the books that are, publishers send her the books that are going to be published beforehand. Mm -hmm. And then she just goes and she does these seminars for librarians everywhere to tell them what's coming out, what's good and what, you know, they get to see the books before and then they get to pre-order for the next year. Wow. Isn't that cool? Awesome. But if I hadn't asked, if I hadn't been curious to just randomly talk to someone and, you know, let go, be, there's no reason, no reason not to, can't to do that, you know. You call it curious. Some people call it vida henna. No. <laughs> so what do you say about those people that would be like, you just be nosy? Hey, I learned something new from my pocket and I can share it with the world. And, you know. I agree with it. And you, that if you have that thought about, oh, she's just been nosy. Let me tell you, nosy people learn faster than those people that want to ask, but they don't have the cojones to ask because they're like, oh my God, people are going to think I'm being nosy. Oh, they're going to judge me. It doesn't matter. If you want to grow, if you want to learn, you have to have that curiosity that she talked about. So I definitely agree with that first one. So if you feel that, you are a nosy person, stop calling yourself curious because that's how you're going to grow. It's all about switching, switching it. And yes. Curiosity. Right, my Norma? Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Inquisitive is another one. I like that. I like that. <laughs> I like that. Inquisitive. It sounds more sophisticated. It sounds more pro. <laughs> Say, I am an inquisitive coach. Mm. Woo! <laughs> I like that. So you were gonna say more about that one? No, no. That's that's it. You know, being curious to learning opportunities and just exploring, exploring. Just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. What's the worst the thing the lady could have told me? Mind your business. <laughs> I like. Ouch. Okay. I just wanted. Yeah. To... I never mind my business. Never. Do you saw me? I don't. That's why everybody um, see me that I'm jolly like this. I'm just like a kid. Kids are curious. Kids don't mind their business. They see something, they say, what's that? 
What are you eating? Why are you doing that? Who is doing that? Where are you going? Why are you going there? They ask questions. And that's where we miss out because we start trying to be this mature fools that don't ask questions. And then we get stuck because when we actually need that answer, we had it, but we didn't ask. So we don't have it at the right moment because we didn't ask when we needed to ask. Oh, that sounds like a tongue twister. But be curious. Don't be afraid to be a kid. It's okay. You know, it's just be you. Right, Minorma? Yeah. Yep. You have to. You have to be. Um, so the next. Yes. Ready? The next one is persistent. Be persistent. Persistent. Okay. Mm -hmm. To deal with obstacles that, that happen. And so for me, I think, I think of persistence also to do what you, sometimes you just have to do things, you know, sometimes you just have to show up every day until it's done, you know, and for example, that could be taking a class, showing up to a meeting, a training, um, finishing a degree, whatever it is, sometimes you just have to show up every day regardless of what happens, you know, your car breaks down, you don't have money for something, you just got to keep going. That's right. And you know, one of the things that you mentioned persistent is that every time you're trying to achieve something, when you're getting close to it, that's when you want to give up. That's when the persistent kind of like disappear, like, I can't do this anymore. This is too hard. It you got to be persistent all the way to the end. I remember when I was going to get my degree and at the end, I, it just got so hard. I wanted to quit, but I asked my son, I asked different people, you know, that curiosity thing that we just talked about. And then I was able to get the knowledge to push me to be able to finish, but you cannot finish if you're not persistent. Right? Yeah. Yeah, especially when you have challenges in front of you. You just got to push through them, muscle through them. You know, it's like when you're in and right there, like you said, usually when it gets the hardest, it's when you're about to get it. Yeah. It's just yeah, I agree with that one. Everything that had happened to me just before I was victorious, <laughs> I felt like a victim. <laughs> what is what is happening to me? I don't need to be in this situation. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know if I can make it. But when I pushed through it, victory was mine. And victory can be yours. But you have to be persistent. I agree with that. You know, no. I'm in agreement with this woman. I'm telling you. I mean, I don't know if we're <laughs> in San Antonio together, but we have in common. I love that. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Let's go with number three. Three. This one's my favorite. They're all, I love all of them, but this one's my favorite. Flexibility. Being flexible to circumstances and events. So this is being flexible to, hey, you can't find a job where you're looking for. Stop looking at the door that won't open and look at all the doors behind you that are open, but you can't see them because you're like this, so you gotta be flexible. It may feel the, like you're heading the wrong direction, but I will tell you in my own experience, I stopped knocking on the door of academia that wouldn't hire me. <laughs> and now I'm making double that what I was making before. So it's, it's just. Bravo, bravo. And that was the curiosity and the persistence that led you into that flexibility and looking at other options. That is a beautiful example. I definitely agree. Because a lot of the people that are listening right now, you that are listening right now, you might be in that situation, especially now with things them kind of, you know, looking a little funky. Um, you can fall into that. It's like economy is bad. That's the reason why things are going to happen to me. Forget about the economy. Get creative, flexible, like she said, 
and start thinking about other things that you can do, other possibilities. And then you're going to be able to get back on the track that you wanted to, or a bigger track is going to open up for you. But flexibility, I definitely agree with it. And it's very hard to be flexible. Yeah. Seriously. Right? We like this. We like comfort. We like to just focus on what we can control and do, and we just got to let go. Yeah. Super important. Yeah. Yes, flexibility and everything, you know, knowing when and where to act, being flexible. And it's okay. I, I think the hardest part about flexibility is you feel like you're giving up something, but you're not. You're just putting it on hold, whatever that something is. And then you might find out that something even better out there that you didn't even know. Explain more about that about that fear of giving up something big when you're being flexible explain that to them so like for example for myself i was giving up this dream that i had right that this path that i thought was for me and so by letting go of that right you know holding on tightly to this thing that wasn't working out i it was like two years of applying to the same type of positions and not even getting interviews and nothing nothing and as soon as i let it go can you believe i got i was like okay i'm done i'm done applying i got three calls from a recruiter for a whole different job field as soon as i let go of that thought that fear that that there was nothing else for me so so are you saying that uh, they must let go of their dream or are you saying what well, explain that no letting go of that one like you know we think we know what's best for us sometimes and so it's really about letting go of that path that career development path that we think is just for us like i know it when you when you think you know something that you are wrong <laughs> you know because we don't know and so I, me? Does that answer i feel like I am wrong. <laughs> excuse me doctor are you saying that i am wrong <laughs> all the time <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm wrong all the time too but did that help i feel like i was about to go on a tangent <laughs> go off track so i'm trying not to but yeah I, I i agree with with that um and the reason why i wanted you to clear that is because that is what people that make excuses when they come up with and this show is all about for this year is no excuses i don't care what your past did to you i don't care what they did to you i don't care what you did no excuses if you want to make it to the next level in your life and you want to be victorious no excuses excuses are just something that you come up with so that you can say, I try. Trying is an excuse for failure. No excuses. So when we are talking about this flexibility that she's referring to, it's all about thinking about other options. Like she said, yeah. I used to be like, I am gonna be a model like this. That's all I wanted to be. And there was something in modeling that I don't want. And yes, I wanted to be a model, but I didn't like the way that they were living. I didn't wait like their, their, their belief system. I didn't like the way that they treated people. So now I decided I want to be a model, but I have to put up with this. You've got to pick sometimes what is more important for you. And that was not important. I mean, of course I know, like, I'm beautiful. I know I'm beautiful, but you know, I have to try to walk away from that and it was hard. But then I ended up in 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 fashion design and graphic design, and then I was just like, uh, right? So I did not get stuck. Oh my god, if I'm not a model, I'm a failure. Heck no, I am a victorious all the way you are victorious all the way and changing your mind into going in a different route doesn't mean that you have failed it means that you have conquered yourself it means that you can go to the next step in your life to be able to do more so please be flexible you are not a failure by being flexible and flexibility don't always mean you have to drop something it just means you have to think about it in a different way
I know, I know, I know, you look good, but you want to look awesome. Well, if you're in San Antonio, Texas, and you're ready to look awesome, all you have to do is contact Sedat at 210-214-7214. Sedat, 210-214-7214. A professional hairstylist in San Antonio, Texas, with a European touch. Call Sedat today. I got it here. <laughs> Writing it down. Curiosity, persistent, flexibility, and numero cuatro. Fourth one is being optimistic. Tell us about that, mamacita. Tell us. Yes. So believing, you know, making the best out of unexpected events. If you lose your job, use it as an opportunity for something else. Maybe spend time with more loved ones, you know, finding a different career path, going to school. You know, you um, don't get, for example, like myself, I couldn't get hired into academia. I was flexible with it and let it go and believe that there was an opportunity out there for me. And there was. <laughs> so believing that, yeah, so believing that those opportunities are out there for you without knowing, without knowing uh, that they are out there. And an example I have of that one was a young lady that I met. She uh, wanted to go to college. She didn't have any idea how she was going to pay for college. And one day she ran into a person who told her about this scholarship that she got, that it was a full ride to Texas Christian University. And she's currently now attending there with this full ride, the scholarships that she had no idea existed that I'm sure is very difficult to get because it's a complete full ride for TCU. And now she's attending school there. That is awesome. So explain to us more about optimism because I know that we like to throw that word out like we think that everybody understand it. I am not a positive person, so how can I be a optimistic person? So please spread a little bit more about that for all the Murphy people over there? So it's really just about if there's something that you want that, the, that you can have it. So I'm trying to think of an example with myself that I've encountered. Um, so before, the, before I got this job that I currently have where I'm making double what I was making before, I had put it out there in my vision board. This was like two years before. I had no idea where I was going to be working or what I was going to be doing, but I put it out there that I wanted to be able to make this amount of money without, without putting what, how I was going to. So that's for me too. I have a hard time sometimes. Like I want to know exactly how everything's going to happen. So being optimistic is letting go of that, letting go of how it's going to happen, but believing that it can happen. I like that, what you said, believing it's going to happen. That mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you on that optimistic part, because a lot of people want to be optimistic, but they don't believe it. You cannot be optimistic and then doubt that you are going to get something. That is the magic there is simply Believing even if someone tells you something that is doesn't go with what your mind said or you saw something, you just have to believe it. That's it. That you said the magical word. If you believe it, then you can be optimistic about receiving what you're gonna get. I yeah. have to pause you there because I want them to get that about believing everything that. It's going to happen in your life. You have to believe it. You want to get a job? You have to believe you're going to get a job. I'm never going to get a job, but I'm going to go interview just in case. I'm sorry, but I, you know, I, I use strong word. That's stupid. Okay? Don't. Okay? Simply, you're going to go out there to the interview. Think about all the skills and all the things that you add. You can add value. And then you're going to be able to believe it. And then when you get to the interview, I can get this job. Why? Because you believe it and you compare what you have 
so that it can help you believe that it's possible that you can get this. And sometimes you might not have the skills about anything, but if you believe I, I'm a hard worker and I can do this and I can do that, guess what? You are going to be optimistic because you're like fired up and full of energy. I'm going to get this. And if they tell me, if can you do this? I'm going to, I don't know, but I will try, right? That is the magic of optimism is believing. And I have to stop and applaud my doctor again. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> believing. See, I am pulling stuff out of you. I am pulling stuff <laughs> out of you. And I like that. You just break it down. I don't think most people are going to um, explain optimism and add that word believing. You did really, really awesome. Great. Muy bien. Estoy muy orgullosa de ti, mi amor. Gracias. <laughs> I just said that I am very proud of, proud of my love. Wow. Okay, you know, I, I cannot be serious for too long, but I do talk a lot. So let me pause so that she can tell us the number five. Yes. So the last one, it's my hardest one too. It's risk taking. Is what? Risk taking, taking risk. Mm -hmm. So taking risks without knowing what the outcome will be. That's right. Tell us more about that. I mean like risk? Yes. Okay. I am not a risk taker. I am afraid of taking risks. You know, the last time I took a risk, I failed. Things have been not work out for me. I was telling me to risk. Oh my God, I'm scared. I can't do it. Like, how do you deal with that? <laughs> I remind them that, you know, I'm scared of risk too. That's, that's one of my hardest ones. I think as you get older, you know, you you fail and then you're scared to fail again mm -hmm. but we got to push ourselves um, <laughs> and sometimes we need someone else to push us it reminds me of when i was 18 and i decided you mean, i wanted to you mean last year? <laughs> yes last year <laughs> i decided i wanted to bungee jump and we get all the way to the top and then I said, no, 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 I can't do this. I got to go. I got to get off. And we were already in the top. And they, so, they said, just go and step to the ledge. And I was like, mm, okay. I believed them. <laughs> and then I was like, I don't want to go. I'm holding on so tight. I was holding on tight. And they're telling me, put your hands together. Put your hands together. And, and then I did it. And they pushed me. And I was like, for a second, oh, it was, it, it was the best. Would I do it again? No. <laughs> but the risk taking, you just sometimes, you just never know what's going to happen, right? And it may lead you to an amazing experience, which it was amazing. It was. It really was. Maybe if somebody got me up there again, I would go on the ledge. Because I don't know why. I, I didn't even think about it. I trusted them. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go on the ledge. What did I think was going to happen? You wanted somebody to push it. You wanted to do it. If you didn't want to do it, you wouldn't have done it. You wanted to do it. Yes, you did. Believe me. And knowing you already, I could not. I mean, like just talking to you, you don't look like the jump, bungee jumping type. You don't. And for you to have done that, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. I did bungee jumping, skydiving, I have done it all. And you do not look like somebody that does bungee jumping. So I am amazingly shocked and I am proud of you for trying that. <laughs> so oh. you did that. You actually bungee jumped. Yes. Wow. Yes. That is cool. I had to get pushed though. <laughs> huh? I said, I did have to get pushed off, though. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Some people don't even take a risk, not even if they get a push. And you actually did. And let me tell you the awesome thing about that is that I remember the first time I bungee jumped and the first time I skydived, I was, they had to push me. And after I got out of that, I did it, I did it again the same day. Um, but 
it was it it boosts you up it just pushed you out at a level that if you're like i did this i can't really do anything so every time you take a small risk that risk make you want to take a bigger one and a bigger one of course you don't want to be like evil can evil and all that kind of stuff right you know evil can evil like yeah no just drive themselves <laughs> you know more i mean i could see myself as an evil can evil for sure but i had to pause in certain things it's just the wisdom part of it but i love the fact that you took that risk and i think that you need to be sharing that with people more often especially with your clients in coaching because nobody is going to think of you <laughs> i mean like i'm crazy i'm loud i'm obnoxious like you are so <laughs> quiet and wise and speak differently and all that kind of stuff i don't see it but i am <laughs> so happy that you did Ooh, i am so happy that you did because you never can judge the book by the cover yeah definitely this is true this yeah. is true there's stuff that i don't even want to remember i did <laughs> 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 that's for another interview <laughs> People do not want to know all the stuff that I did either. You'll be like, we need to ban her from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do. I do love that. So you wanted to add more about the risk? Yeah, you know, just apply for those jobs of eating career development. The people that get ahead are the ones, not the check off, but, you know, that, that's the thing. And when you're applying for a job and you look at the qualifications, don't get turned off just because you don't, you can't check everything off. If you could check everything off, that's not the job for you. That's just staying in the same playing field. You got to reach for it. Reach for that job that's just right there. You know, and you know what? Most likely, if it's for you, you're going to get it. Wow. I like that. You saw what she said? If you just apply for it, you might get it. You might get it. But if you follow all of these things that she mentioned, be curious, be persistent, be flexible, be optimistic, and be a risk taker. I love that. And I agree 159.999, 100, 200% with her. You know, all the ones that you want to add, I agree with it because I love the way she presented it. I love her examples. I am telling you, stop making excuses. Really, stop making excuses. You, oh, I'm not curious. Start being curious. I am not persistent. Start being persistent. I am not flexible. Okay, you know the answer to that just do it that's it stop making excuses optimistic just do it believe it think about the things that you have the values that you bring and you will be optimistic about it and the risk taker you don't have to bungee jump like we did no. your risk is simply maybe to just say hi to somebody oh they're not they're not gonna like me i talk to everybody but that's not a risk for me because I'm an icebreaker type of personality. That is not you. Your risk might be just be an icebreaker. Just go to somebody and say, hey, what's your name? You just took a risk for them to say, why the heck do I have to tell you my name? But at least you tried. And then you can find out, you know, if they answer you or not, that's fine. Then you try it again. You try something else about a food you can take a risk i'm giving you small examples so that you don't tell me that i am not a risk taker because that's not just an excuse a foolish excuse i'm trying not to say bad words you know I'm, I'm <laughs> so, so, but i am trying just food try something new my husband is from turkey i have a hard time eating their food but i tried <laughs> i like mexican and italian and latino food or you know african food so you know some food uh, but i tried stuff okay if you don't try it you can't say that you don't like it or whatever because you didn't try it and that's what i'm giving you those examples because they're very simple stuff if you want to apply for that job, 
apply for it. All you can get is no response. All you can get is thank you for trying. Nothing you're gonna lose by that. However, if you gain, my norma, if they actually apply, what do they gain? A lot. They can get an interview, they can get the job, or they can maybe find another, something else. It might lead to another little thing, another little breadcrumb to your path. Exactly, that's right. So, like I said, stop making excuses. So if you're an expert in a particular area, author, speaker, coach, doctor, doctor, <laughs> And you want to talk with this crazy, loud, obnoxious, crazy Panamanian, black, beautiful, fantastic woman, then <laughs> all you have to do is get in touch with me at info at envivoassociate.com. Again, info at envivoassociate.com. And if you need help with your website, coaching, whatever, visit us at www. Uh, mvivoassociate.com. I was going to actually say at, but it's not. It's just triple W, mvivoassociate.com. Mm -hmm. I know it's on um, what? Instagram and YouTube? Yeah, in vivo live. But my doctor, if you actually look in the back of her and you're going to see this screen, it says Dr. Reyes Life Coaching with oh, the doctor word, just the DR the acronym. So remember, visit her. Through this whole video, she has been giving you programming hints. Find me, find me, find me at Dr. Reyes Life Coaching in Instagram. Is that correct? Yes. Da, 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 da. Now that we have got to the end of the show, can you share something with the people that are listening? One of your last words before I disconnect. I am going to shut up, which is not very easy for me. And as soon as you finish your last word, whatever you want to share, then I am going to disconnect. Okay. Final thoughts. Life is too short to not take risk, to believe in yourself. Forget everybody, like you said, no, ex no excuses. Life is just too short. 